The Senate's passage of the California Values Act, Senate Bill 54, is an acknowledgement of the cultural and economic contributions made to our great state by immigrants from all over the world. And it is a rejection of President Trump's false and cynical portrayal of undocumented immigrants as a lawless community. Undocumented residents commit crimes and are incarcerated at a lower rate than native-born residents. Counties with sanctuary policies are safer and economically better off than comparable non-sanctuary counties. Our communities will become more, not less, dangerous if local police are enlisted to enforce federal immigration laws. Our precious local law enforcement resources will be squandered if police are pulled from their duties to arrest otherwise law-abiding maids, cooks, mothers, day laborers, mothers and fathers. Trust will be eroded, and in fact, it will be lost altogether. Crimes will go unreported for fear of deportation, and criminals will remain free to victimize others. To my colleagues in the Senate, no one wants dangerous or violent criminals roaming our streets. The California Values Act allows state and local law enforcement to notify ICE agents before violent or dangerous criminals are released from incarceration and allows their transfer into federal custody for deportation. But Californians will not squander their precious public safety dollars to separate mothers from their children and children from their mothers, to detain dreamers or to deport otherwise very honest, hardworking people who are so critical to our economy. I want to thank all the individuals who came from all over the great state of California to voice their opinions, their thoughts, their fear, their anxiety of what is happening to them or to their family members, to their neighbors, to their loved ones, to their colleagues at work. And to all the great Democratic senators of the Senate, I want to thank them very much for a, a very engaged debate uh, today on the Senate floor. Uh, we have surpassed the first obstacle, getting out of the Senate, and now it's on to the Assembly, where we have to roll up our sleeves and, and work really hard and engage our colleagues. But uh, I look forward to the spirited debate. And be mindful about one thing. This is an extraordinary departure from past presidents, then President Barack Obama, as well as George W. Bush, a Republican and a Democrat. Because the focus is no longer on violent criminal felons. But the focus has now become maids, busboys, housekeepers. The very same men and women who we entrust to take care of our children. The same very men and women who we entrust to take care of our senior citizens. In the most vulnerable moments in their, latter, their last stages of life, we entrust these individuals to take care of our family members. We won't regress and we won't go back. This is the great state of California. We can only move forward. With that, thank you very much. Thank you. Scott, you want to come over, Scott? Come on, please, you know. All the members want to come, feel free. Whoever, everyone's welcome, everyone wants to come by. Yes. Come on in. Senator Scott Wiener right here, Senator Bill Monning, our majority leader. <laughs> Senator, Senator Bill Dodd from Napa County. <laughs> And by the way, and by the way, with, with Senator, Senator Bill Monning, who has a beautiful Monterey Peninsula and Carmel and, and Monterey and other beautiful areas, Salinas, you know, so many immigrants who picked the strawberries in Watsonville and Alcachofa, Artichoke and Castroville, and so many immigrants who work at the most beautiful luxurious hotels, resorts in the entire world, Pebble Beach and Carmel, and you have Senator Bill Dodd in his region, among the finest wines 
in the entire world. And all of those grapes are picked by immigrants, half of them which are undocumented. Right? Senator Scott Weiner, who has been an incredible champion before he came to the Senate, he has, his voice was so strong and unequivocal uh, in the County Board of Supervisors in San Francisco. He's been a wonderful champion, this man right here. Okay. What do we have? Why don't we get to uh, questions because we got to go back to work. It's a, it's, a, it's a good question because, uh, again, um, these execu executive orders are an extraordinary departure uh, from the past practices of then President Barack Obama as well as uh, George W. Bush. Uh, our intent is to make our committees safer. The empty rhetoric is not going to make our uh, committees uh, safer. In fact, going to increase crime uh, because immigrants will no longer call the police department. And the reality is this. If an individual has committed a crime, we want to make sure he or she is actually convicted if, in fact, that does come to fruition in a court of law by our local prosecutors. We don't want them to be detained and then removed because what happens to the victims of the crimes? So um, will, he, uh, will he strike back at us? We don't know. We hope not. He's the president of the greatest country in the world. It's not about retribution. It's about bringing the country together, not tearing at the fabric of who we are as a nation. I'm sorry, sorry to one. No, it doesn't suggest that. I mean, we don't want to make any predictions of what will happen in assembly. Wonderful colleagues will have to do our due diligence too. We'll have to work hard, engage with all the members, uh, give them the respect that they deserve to sit down and, and go over the finer points of this measure. Uh, make no assumptions. So, you know, we all look forward to, to working with our colleagues in the assembly. I guess I'm curious, though, why you took two-thirds off. You got it to the peers with a two-thirds vote. So were you concerned about getting it through over there? Uh, again, I'm not going to make any assumptions of what's going to happen over there. We're just going to go back to what I said. We're going to work hard, not make any assumptions at all whatsoever. And, you know, uh, if uh, we get uh, a 41 simple majority, we get a 41 simple majority. You know, a lot of this is contingent, obviously, what happens with the federal government if they increase uh, their uh, deportation sweeps uh, to uh, punish uh, cities and counties or a great state like California, the urgency may increase. Uh, or once again, we'll measure what's happening in Washington and what ICE does in the field. So. It's, I don't want to say it's a, a cat and mouse game, but um, um, we're going to measure and watch them closely and what they do as well. I'm sure they're watching us as well. Oh, I want to make sure I'll come around. Okay. Any other questions? Hasmin? I, I think it's, it's a victory for all communities. Um, I, I want to note that uh, just uh, uh, a week and a half ago, uh, we celebrated St. Patrick's Day. And uh, it was a beautiful celebration of the Irish uh, contrib contributions to this great country and all the contributions that Irish Americans have made. And it was not lost on me that the president of Ireland was here in the White House next to uh, Donald Trump. And he was concerned because there are 50,000, uh, reportedly perhaps more, uh, undocumented Irish immigrants uh, in the United States. So it's not just a Latino issue. Um, it's been characterized that, unfortunately, by the Trump administration, uh, but it is an issue that deals with all uh, uh, people from all over the world, uh, whether you're Canadian, whether you're Irish, uh, whether you're German, Brazilian, Chinese, or Korean, or, or Mexican. There are Korean dreamers, too, and DACA students, you know. Uh, so this is not a Latino issue. It's an issue that, that, that impacts everybody from all over the world. And uh, so I think it's a victory for the Constitution of the United States when it comes to due process. It's a victory for all Californians and the entire nation. Okay. Yeah. Should immigrants have the ability to rehabilitate after their return to the Okay, if you're not a reporter, we'll talk right over there. Okay. Anything, sir? Thank you for responding. Este honrados este por la victoria este hoy día. Eh, es una victoria hacia corto plazo, por lo menos eh, nos queda todavía hacer cabileo eh, con nuestros colegas en la Cámara Baja de la Asamblea 
eh, vamos a seguir este, haciendo nuestro trabajo necesario. Y quiero dar las gracias a todos los miembros de la comunidad, a aquellos que sacrificaron este, un día de pago de salario para alzar sus voces colectivamente en defensa de sus comunidades, nuestra comunidad, como californianos, como americanos. Yo me siento bien honrado y orgulloso ¿no? que, que dejaron este, sus ciudades a llegar aquí para caminar este, un poquito diferente, caminando los precintos ahora, caminando los pasillos ¿no? del Capitolio, de su Capitolio, ¿no? porque este Capitolio pertenece a cada uno de ustedes también. Así que muchas gracias a todos. Gracias.